Boom, boom. Okay, perfect. Happy New Year, Michi. So crazy. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Happy New Year to you too, brother. Oh, perfect. Hey, this has been the last year was your year, huh? When it came to music, television, just all around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I'm just getting started. That's why that's yeah. how I feel. I feel like I'm just getting started. I love that. And I would love to talk about just getting started. Where did you get this start from when it came to music, especially because people knew you from social media and reality TV and different things. So give me that kind of progressive, like, origin story for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm from D.C. I'm from D.C. When I was, uh, when I graduated high school, I got straight into, like, uh, hosting clubs and things like that. I went to college first. I played basketball. And I just realized, like, that wasn't my love. It wasn't what I really wanted to do. I just did it because it was a free education. And my mom wanted everybody to go to college. So I did that. But I told her, like, after the first uh, first year, I was like, listen, I'm trying to sing. I'm trying to dance. And she was like, uh, she was like, go for it. So when she did that, now it was uh, me trying to build my name and things like that. And it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, Instagram wasn't really that crazy big at that time. So you had, like, Twitter. And, uh so I started, I gained Twitter, I gained Twitter followers. I don't remember how, <laughs> but I guess uh just being light skin worked at the, at the time. <laughs> that worked <laughs> in your favor. Yeah, yeah, I guess that worked in my favor at the time. Just posting regular pictures and stuff like that. But um uh, I started hosting clubs. I started there and I would record like uh remakes and things like that. And yeah. as I'm hosting the club, I would have a DJ play mines and I would since I already got the mic, I would just perform my song and stuff like that. So that's how I got it. That's how I got started. Yeah. But once I once I did that, uh, my kind my name kind of like made a little buzz, and I kind of met I met a guy named Russell Webster, and he had his own like production company and things like that, and he put me into a group when I signed with him. So the group wow. is called Four EY, and it stands for Forever Young. Oh, so okay. that's how I initially I, when I got to the group, I didn't really know how to. I didn't know how to really sing harmony. I didn't know what harmony really was. I didn't know how to dance. I had groove, but I didn't really know how to dance. Yeah. So uh, they put us in artist development for like a year, a year and a half. And it's crazy because now you don't see no labels doing that no more. You don't see no labels. But now it's just like a, a, a artist go viral or something, and then they just go straight to the oh, stage. Yeah. And then you looking like, dang, they ain't got no stage. They don't know how to hold the mic. They don't know how to speak. You know what I mean? But uh, I had the leverage of doing that early on, um, which was a blessing. Uh, the group actually didn't work out. Yeah. Of course, it, it, it didn't work out. Um, We ended up getting uh, new additions in the end. You know what I mean? The uh, the guy that we signed to, he ended up playing every role you can think of, stylist, manager, role manager, uh, everything. You know what I mean? And then when money rolled in, he took money from everything. Damn. So, um, and at the time, we were like uh, 18, 19 years old. So we just really living our dream. You know, we touring with, uh, we did a, we did a spa dates with like August Alcina, Miguel. We toured with Miley's Behavior, Jacob Lattimore, Dickie Simmons, Trevor Jackson, you know, all the young stars, OMG girls. You oh, know, yeah. it was, it was a little yeah, party yeah, so, for y'all, huh? It was a whole little yeah, party for y'all. Yeah, so, so we was, so we was, uh, we was just really living the dream. So we wasn't really thinking about money at that time. It was just like, you know, we don't have bills anyway. We always on the road and all the girls screaming our names, like we are. That's how we really looked at it until um, years go by. And then we signed in major deals with uh, Atlantic and E1. We did a partnership and um, we got a half a million dollars for that. But they gave us the first advance up front, you know, before the album is done. And then they give you the, the rest, you know, once the album is done. Yeah. Um, we didn't see any of that money. We, we wasn't really knowing where the money was going. We wasn't mm -hmm. really, we wasn't really uh, on top of the business, if, yeah. if, I'm, if I may say. We wasn't really on top of the business. So um, we end up that end up not working out. I left the group, and when I left the group, I was in a a, a crazy depression. I I didn't even know if I really wanted to do music for real after that, uh, because you know after feeling like you gave your all to something and then it's not working, you figure you start thinking like it's just for me. You know what I mean? Then I ended up getting into a bunch of like publicity stuff with uh, Black China that went that kind of like overshadowed a lot of stuff that I was doing. So. At that moment, I was just like in a real depression. I was just like, just living life, not really thinking about music, not thinking about nothing. I just wanted to, you know, make money and just kind of like just travel and things like that. So all in all, I got out, got out of all that toxic stuff. You know, I, I put my first song out, which was called Like That. And when I put that song out, it pretty much uh, re, re, 
reinvented myself when it comes to the music, when it comes to being solo, and when it, when it comes to my confidence as well. Because yeah. I didn't know how people was going to perceive me. You know what I mean? I didn't know uh, if they were going to accept it or what was going to be the outcome. But I gave it my all. And I did that with a guy named Troy Taylor. He, um, I mean, I, I think everybody pretty much knows who Troy Taylor is. He he did everything with Chase Songs, uh, Boys to Men, with, he mm-hmm. with Houston, he, Grammy Award winner. Yeah. Um, I did that song. It went crazy. You know, at the moment, probably got like 20, 30 million streams, uh, probably 14 to 15 million views on YouTube. This is all independent, just me and um, my own personal team. So when I did that, I was like, oh, I'm like, okay, this is uh, this is something right here. You know what I mean? Like, I got something. So uh, once I did that, people start reaching out for TV shows out of nowhere. Like, it was, uh, to be completely honest, I think uh, my manager at that time had pitched me for the real world. Oh, but the wow. real world was doing a show. And I ended up going to, I ended up going, I was in Atlanta. I went, ended up, a lot of people don't even know this. A lot of people think that that just like appeared on the show, but they don't know what I had to do <laughs> to actually get on the show. And it's crazy because this is the first time I'm actually telling this, this story. I had, uh, my manager had put me down. He, he, he kind of tricked me. He said, yeah, I got you an interview uh, with um, uh, the real world to, to, to do it. I get there. It's like 500 people. Yeah. Like I had to wait hours in Atlanta, like, like in the rain, like out in the street. Like I had to like literally wait, like I had to wait. And um, at that moment, I'm like, man, I just put a song out, man. I'm kind of lit. Like, man, they, they should, they should want me. You know what I mean? But I did it. I stayed in that line and um, it took maybe three or four hours. And when I finally got in there, it took two minutes. They did a, they did an interview with like, it was 10 people around. They asked everybody the same question. One question. They asked everybody the same question. Like, why should I have you on my show? Yeah. They just the only question they asked everybody. Yeah, I don't even remember what I said, but I know it was some cocky stuff like because, because why wouldn't you have me on your show? I'm everything. You know what I mean? I'm whatever what you mean. Or something like that. You know what I mean? They ended up didn't call me back. <laughs> didn't call me back. So it was crazy. Well, they didn't call me back, but they remembered me. And yeah. they called me back for a different show. They were like, you know what? We think you're good for this show. We're doing a show called X on the Beach. And when they call me for that, I'm like, I don't care what it is. I'm doing it. You know what I mean? So uh, after that, you know, um, once you do one show and, and, and they like you, they just start calling you for different stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? So that was just a, a, a blessing, you know, a blessing in disguise. Because I didn't never think I would do a reality television or nothing like that. Yeah, there was nothing that if you asked me, I'm like, y'all want to do that? If anything, I would say movies. You know, I would have never said reality television, but um, I did that and it opened a whole nother door for me, a whole mm-hmm. nother different door, um, a whole different rapport of fans and stuff like that. Um, uh, and I put another song out right before that aired called "Want to Be a Man," and uh-huh. that was produced by uh, Ao and Keys. At that moment, Ao and Keys had just dropped uh the "I Like It," "I Like It Like That" with uh with um. Uh, Cardi B and went number one, so that was a good time. And uh, a guy named Vito wrote it with me. Vito yeah. the singer, he uh-huh. wrote that. Song. He wrote that song uh-huh. with me. So uh, I put that out, and it did the same thing. It did numbers because like that. After I did like that, I went straight to the labels. Like man, I just did fourteen million. I did a um, um, million streams. They like man, you. This is one song. You know what I mean? Like like we want to see a rapport. We want to see like uh, can you do it again? Like like is that you know what I mean? That could have just been luck or whatever the case may be. So all the labels pretty much are kind of like, didn't turn me down, but they wanted to see more. And so they wasn't going to offer me what I wanted. I had hella deals on the table, but you know, if you don't, if you're not getting, if you're not controlling your masters or getting uh, the most out of your masters, and um, if it's a 360 deal, whatever the case may be, it's better off just doing it yourself. Because at that moment, they just, the labels just want to like feed you to your fire. They don't want to start it for you. You know what I mean? They want to save the most money as they can and just like uh just put you out there. You're already done, you're already ready to go. So uh they all turned me down. So I put one to be a man out, did the same thing. Millions of streams. Uh I got Pandora on board. I'm getting 345 spins a week. Like uh people calling me from Paris, people calling me like, yo, Quavo just posted your song. Um, it was he was at a fashion week and they had your song playing on the radio in Paris. I'm like, all oh, type of stuff. I'm like, Damn, I'm like dope. You know what I mean? So that was a blessing as well. Like I didn't know that it was gonna hit, but you know, uh, I I think the I think the stuff comes when you when you least expect it. You know, when you 
when you're working so much and you're not really expecting it, I yeah. feel like everything just come full circle, you know? So that's pretty much how I, how I got to putting out now my uh my first my first uh EP. And it's been a minute. I've been doing it for about my, like seven, eight years. And this is the first time I actually got a chance to put my own EP out because I've been dealing with so many people and trying to trying to get trying to go with the majors, getting getting uh People wanting to take take advantage. They want so so much of a percentage. You know, they they start the recording process. We get 10, 15 songs in, then they want to stop paperwork and, and all type. So I've been dealing with so much stuff to the point where I couldn't control my own music. But wow. now, but now I had the chance to actually uh control all my own music and I got my own funds to where I can not really care, you know, because that's the biggest thing. If you don't have the funds to pay for the music, you can easily go get a beat from you know, somebody in the neighborhood or something like that. But when you actually want like something that can contend with yeah. the people that's actually out, the you know, the ushers, the Chris Browns, the the Drakes, the everybody, you gotta go to the people that they using it. You know what I mean? The people that they're using. Like yeah. a OG Parker or, you know, a, a Jay White on the beat. He's on the album too. You got um uh Kate Major who uh executive produced it. Um so now it's like, all right, I'm in there. I'm in the ball game. I'm in the ball game. I'm working with all of the same people, you know, that's that's doing everything. And now I can fund it myself. So it's it's pretty much been the, the best situation. I've been in pretty much the best space musically that I feel like. So this this is like my baby. That's why I got it tatted as soon as I did it. I got it tatted on my neck. Oh, I love <laughs> this that. This is the one for me. Yeah, no, I, I really do love that. I would love to go back to parts of these com the conversations because you really um, you touched on some really interesting things. One, we talked about that one year of artist development. I think that time when you were with the OMG Girls, I think that was probably the last era of true artist development, like you said, because now we have it where a lot of the artists, as long as they've been on TikTok and Instagram mm -hmm. and and Facebook and putting out music and putting out things and labels just kind of like already, like you said, they'll grab them and push them and they'll focus more so on, can we make this a viral trend? Can people do a dance to your song rather than mm -hmm. can you dance to your song? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they don't even, the labels, just the thing, they don't even care if you last long or not. Yeah. They don't even care like, you know what, this is an artist who may last or this is a, they're like, oh, it's hot right now. It's making money right now. All right, cool. Let's, let's just push it. All right, the, the, the fire go out, they go to the next, you know what I mean? So it's no real, they don't really care. You know what I mean? They, they don't really care. They're only worrying about their numbers. You know what I mean? Which is, I know it's a business, so it's not personal. You know what yeah. I mean? I get it. Time has changed. Music has changed. Social media has changed. So it's like, you got to go with the different changes, you know? But I feel like as an artist, from our standpoint, I feel like that's stuff that you need to do if you want to last, you know what I mean? Because it's going to be an artist like me that get a song and, 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 and blow up and then get next to you on stage and really embarrass you because it's a total different, it's a total different thing. No stage present, don't know how to control the crowd, don't know how to get interact, you know, interact with the crowd. Like, there's a lot of things that I see now and I'd be like, you know, I keep my opinions to myself because I don't like to put certain energy into the world. But in my mind, I'd be like, you know, if she could have did this or they would have did this, they'd be way better. You know what I mean? But I, I feel like it is what it is at this point. I don't feel like I don't feel like they're going to go back to it. I feel like that's something that a, a artist got to do. And like your team, that's the best thing that, that people have people around you that can tell you, like, that don't look good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like that's what is missing. Yeah. Everybody's friends and family, they, they see you lit and they just like, oh, that's it, it's time. <laughs> Instead of saying like, you can't just shake your butt all day. Like you gotta do something else. Or you can't just walk back and forth and just scream. You know, you gotta actually know how to control it. Like, yeah. so I feel like that was a blessing. I, I that's, that's one thing I took from that experience. Cause for, for a long time, I wanted to, I was feeling like I wasted time. I wasted four years and I, you know, I could have been by myself and all that. Then I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? God put me in that position to to realize, you know what? Take away all the things that I put in place. You had vocal lessons. You had media training. You had a, I had a life coach where we had to go and talk about our lives. We had um uh the studio. Record, 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 record. You know what I mean? Like, so just so much, so many different things. Dance choreography that we did for hours and for hours that make it now to where if I got a video show, I got something, I can go in there the week of or the week right before, get it down packed, and I'm ready, ready to go. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So that's what I took from it. So it was actually a blessing. 
No, I like that. I think it also gave that perspective because it's like one of those things where you can go back into it. So any deal you're doing now, anything you move forward, you you can know and, um, you know, you know, someone's BSing you now, you know, you've been through it. So no one could come in and say, oh, this is like this artist, this, that you it helped you understand how to work with other people. It helped you understand how to grab choreography, harmonizing features. If you're you know what I mean? It helped you understand yeah, yeah. The where now there's no there's no real push for understanding the business because I think it's like yeah. where if you go viral, that means I don't have to pay for artist development. So because all I have to do is make sure you get another hit out there that can go viral and then I can use those as the numbers rather than saying, wait, Michi's so crazy, he needs to know how to harmonize his tone, get that image, what's his look, you know what I mean? Instead, it's like, you got yeah. the whole package of it where right now it's almost like instant. It's like like ramen noodles. It's like, okay, cool. Just that hot water, three minutes, shake it up, now eat. Mm -hmm. so yep. And 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 it's crazy because a lot of the a lot of the artists that's like even lit now, like new artists, it's like people that I've helped too, you know what yeah. I mean? And help promote and things like that and knew before it even happened. And I just be thinking now, like if they, if they would have had the artist development, one of them is two is Osiris. Like that was that that like he was my little homie, but he blew up so fast. Like if and then he tried to go into dancing or doing different things and trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? But I feel like if just say if he would have had all this development way beforehand and then he went viral, it probably would have been a crazy different story. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But mm -hmm. when you're young and people around like your family just see, because I, I can even say it for myself, if I was 18 years old and I went viral, my mom, or I was 17 and she had to sign the contract, she's signing it. <laughs> she's signing it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Let's just be real. You know, yeah. you know where we come from. A uh, hundred thousand dollars is, is, a, is like changing. You know what yeah. I mean? So uh, I I'm, I feel like I'm just you know truly blessed to be in the position that I'm in now because now all we got to do is continue to market and, and and then wait for that time because once it once it hit it's it's like it, it's pretty much over with because everything else can, been kind of like been marinated. It's been marinated and it's been seasoned. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's just ready to get in the frying pan and ready to go. So I'm just yeah. being patient. No, I like that. Um, you know, you talked about like going through that depressed stage, right? And now it's a really big thing when it comes to mental health, especially with black men. How'd you get out of it? You know, what was the thing that let you know Man. that it wasn't your career wasn't over for you? You still like, you know, God had a purpose for you. It might have hurt you. You're hurt right now, but you ain't gonna stay hurt. Yeah, uh, I, it was my brother. I got uh, my brother. He he was like a father to me growing up, and um, he pretty much was the one who got me out of that stage. It, I went through a, a point where it was just like, um, and then COVID hit too. So I was just like trying to figure out like, what do I do? Because all I knew was really music. You know what I mean? And at that point, I couldn't do music. I couldn't. It, there was nothing I could do. You know yeah. what I mean? So I would look in the mirror and like. I don't know who I am or what I can do or what outside of this. And right now that just got stripped away from me. So I don't know what to do. You know yeah. what I mean? So at that moment, I just hit rock bottom and I just, I just found myself just crying. Like I was just crying, trying to figure it out. Uh, even thought about suicide. You know what I mean? Not really want to be here. Even recorded the video crying and, and sending it to my brother. Like, this is it for real. You know what I mean? Because it just, um, I didn't really know the state of the world what was going to happen. And then at the same time, I was dealing with so many letdowns, so many no's, so many, uh, all right, I'm all right. I feel like I got it going. And then, ah, uh, smack you, you right back down. You know what I mean? Just so many times. And at that moment, it was just like, Kobe was the last straw. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, all right, I don't know when I'm going to get back to life or when I'm going to get back to myself. At this point, I'm just waking up doing nothing. And I just wasn't happy. I just, I just wasn't, wasn't happy. And by the grace of God, my brother, he, uh, he flew me to LA. He flew me to LA. And, um, my brother, he co-managed a guy named Kyle Kuzma to play with the Lakers. Wow. And, um, he flew me out there and I stayed with him. Uh, I stayed with uh, him and he had a chef there and they told me, listen, uh, as long as you out here, you gotta, gotta work out, you gotta read. And I was like, they was like, everything else, you gotta worry about bills, you gotta worry about nothing else. Just, so I'm in this big house, chef cooking, uh, and so I'm like, all right, cool. I'm finna read. You know what I mean? Like, whatever I gotta do at this point. Like, I don't know what else I'm gonna do. So, 
I'm going to do this. I ain't got bills, you know, because at that moment, too, when COVID hit, I, I lost my place in Atlanta, too, because I didn't have the, the funds. So it was all just bad. It was just all bad. But I flew out there. I stayed out there for about four months. And um, and this is crazy because this is still after this is still after I did the TV show. This oh, is wow. after I did my first show. It's after I did my first show. Because after my first show, I had the money and I blew it. I blew it. Like after like me, when I first got like fifty thousand dollars, I was like, I thought that was a lot, but man, that's it went so it probably it probably left in a month, to be completely honest. It probably left in a month. I was flying my family out to Miami. We on boats. I'm buying jewelry. I'm just buying stuff. And I'm not even thinking about the, what, what I'm banking on is, okay, I got another show going to come up. I got, uh, um, I'm a tour with Jacque. I, I had stuff that I was going to do. But when COVID hit, it smacked me. Like, it left me to with nothing. And I was just like, I'm like, dang, I just did life all wrong. That's how I felt. I felt like I was just doing everything wrong. Yeah. But, but you just fast forward. I went to LA. I, I was reading books. I read a book called The Secret that pretty much I feel like saved my life. It was about manifestation and about, you know, uh, the energy that you put into the world is what is what you get out of it. You know what I mean? You can, it just teaches you how you can change. You can change your narrative at any time in your life. It don't matter if you're 40, it don't matter how old you are, nothing. You can change everything if you change your mindset and if you change your thoughts. You know what I mean? Like if you think I can't do it, or if you think it's too late, or if you think these things, then that's what you're gonna get because that's the energy you're putting out. But if you think, you know what, Art, right, I went through this, it don't even matter. Tomorrow gonna be a good day. You know what I mean? Like tomorrow, nine times out of ten, be a good day. Because nine times out of ten, when you wake up and hit your toe on the edge of the bed, you be like, dang, today's gonna be a bad day. That day end up being bad as hell because you didn't already put out there today ain't really this. I don't, I ain't feeling it. You know what I mean? We used to do that in school all the time. We go to school like, man, I'm tired. I don't, I don't feel it today. And that whole day, you don't feel it. You don't, it don't, you don't snap out of it. You know what I mean? So it teaches you ways that you can. And I read a book called uh, um, Bad Habits, like Breaking Bad Habits, out of like how to just like when you're thinking negative thoughts, how you can just like write stuff down or just you know look in the mirror, say different things, uh, just uh, looking things in your phone that make you smile, and it, and it really just like change your change your mindset on a lot of things. So. Reading really helped me get to the point where I'm like, eff it. I'm like, whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever happens is gonna happen. What's for me is gonna be for me. If I ain't got no, if I ain't got nothing, it's all good because <laughs> I, figured out, I figured out what really make me happy. And that was really I found times where it was really looking at like videos of my mom and my nieces and like that really just genuinely just make me smile. You know what I mean? You know, it's so it was had nothing to do with money, it had nothing to do with being an artist, and nothing, nothing, it had something to do with family you know what I mean so that fig that made me realize you know what this is my reason this is this is my reason and if I got this then I'm cool with anything in life so yeah. now I'm not just like you know kind of just let the pieces happen the way it is but if I didn't have my brother at that moment and um uh it's a guy named Vin which is uh Kyle's uh manager they the ones who pretty much got me out of that but that's why I feel like it's real big that people have a support system because you just think about all the kids that commit suicide and things like that. They they really don't talk to people. They don't have somebody that can really get them out of the situation, you know? Because mm -hmm. talking is not always the cure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes it makes you even more mad because you're really realizing how sick and messed up your life is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So sometimes that don't happen. But if you have somebody that can kind of like change your narrative, it's like it's a super, super blessing. So, you know, I was just blessed to, you know, to be one of them ones that has had somebody that really cared enough that can that kind of like changed my narrative and my reasoning. Nice. I love that. That's beautiful. Um, I want to be conscious of our time. So two more questions. Um, I always I know it's like a busy day. It's, I mean, especially New Year started. Um, one about, you know, you talked about owning your masters and really taking hold of the business for yourself, right? You know, how important is that, that you new artists, even just new creatives, you know what I mean? Understanding the power of owning it. Cause right now everyone has shirts, own your masters and all these things, but yeah. I don't think people understand why and what it really means to own your master, to understand the contract, to understand the team and to even understand how you are as an artist. Yeah, I feel like now that that's the biggest thing because 
this the music that you put out is not for now. It's for you to so you can make money forever, you know. And and if you own your masters and, and percentages of your masters, that's how you get paid forever. Every time yeah. you're playing radio, every time it's on TV, every time it's an elevator, whatever the case may be, you're getting paid residuals. Like like every whether you got it set up for every two months or three months or every half a year or whatever the you know your payout is. Um, that's what it's about. It's not about the money right now. That's why producers are so rich. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why they're so that's why Timberland and Dr. Dre and all these people are so rich because they own the master. So every time you playing a song, it don't matter how old it is, they're getting paid forever. And I think that's that's what a lot of artists don't really think about now. Cause it's like I said, it's so quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and, and a lot of people worried about changing their now than really pretty much building their future. So um owning your masters is always gonna be key for me because you never know. We can just just like uh like like say like a Chris Brown or something like that. Right now, and if somebody go back and bring one of his old songs to TikTok and blow it up over again, if he don't own the masters, that's going to whoever wrote it, whoever uh <laughs> You know what I mean? But if you own some of the masters, a song from way back then, then brought you all this money again. You know nice. what I mean? Because you understood, you know, you need to own own your work. And that's not, that don't mean if you didn't write it, even if you didn't write it, you can still own your masters. You know what I mean? A lot of people now, producers or writers, they're, they'll get you. They'll, I wrote it pretty much as my song. You Whatever the case may be, however they talk to these people. Um, and they'll kind of like manipulate you. But you're the artist. When you do the song, that's your song. You own that song, period, point blank. Now, you have the obligation, and if somebody helped you, or you got a manager, or somebody that, you know, that's, if you feel like they deserve a certain percentage of it, then, you know, always be fair. But you own that song. That's your song. Just because they wrote it, produced it, that don't mean nothing. They get publishing. They get their publishing. That's it. If you, if they, if they, you negotiate a master's in there or something, whatever the case may be, then okay, cool. But you don't have to just give it away because it's not just, but that's, artists don't know that because you know, they're not educated about it. They don't know that. If you, they think you didn't write it, I didn't do nothing, they, I don't own it. Ain't, it ain't really, you know, I got it just to shows. Nah. No, you get an artist fee. <laughs> you get an artist fee, for sure. <laughs> you get an artist, you get an artist fee. Period. Right. So, uh, I'm glad now I'm educated about it because I didn't know about it yeah. back then. You know what I mean? I didn't even know about it when I put like that out. Cause I did, a lot of people think I made a certain amount from like that, and I really didn't. I just started when I got my manager, and we went back and ceased and assist and went back and got back, you know, certain things. But at that moment, I didn't know either, cause I I didn't know every million streams for certain certain uh certain um platforms. You get uh forty five hundred or five thousand. It depends on Spotify, iTunes, you know. So you imagine these artists getting a hundred million streams, hundred million times five thousand is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> one thing, one to give song. away to somebody else. <laughs> I pray that ice I spray I pray that ice spice and coil all these people that's doing TikTok. I pray that they um that they got some control over their stuff because the streaming now uh, uh, a million streams is five grand. So I know that they, it, a lot of them ain't loaded as they supposed to be because like it happened so fast and they don't be educated. But yeah. that's like the girl Glorilla. I seen that she had posted like she didn't really make the what she thought off of the F and F record that she put yeah. out. And it's because the art, the the producer took this from that whatever the case may be. And you probably thinking as the artist, I didn't write or produce it or nothing. So it ain't. And that's bullshit. That's that's not how it's supposed to go. That's yeah. not how it's supposed to go. But you know, in that moment when you just Sign the stuff and agree, and just because you want to be lit, you realize, like, you know what? Sometimes the first songs that blow you up may be your biggest record, and you never know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you got to do that one the right way. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I love that. <laughs> oh, for real. For real. You may not, you know, you never know what, what, what happens and what God got planned for you. Yeah. You never know if it's just one song, never know if it's just two. So if you're going to put any of them out and blow up, you don't want to blow the person up behind the scenes while you out there doing all the hard work. <laughs> and why people want you to remix it and use it again and you be like this. So you still get more money on more money. Man, everybody remixing and it's going right to do it over there. Mm. <laughs> you had to do all that work. You had to show up to the club. You had to show up here. Yeah. And they just sit at home like, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, man, it's crazy. It, it's crazy. Oh, so. oh man. Yeah, I love that. Educated, being educated is key for sure. Um, so last question before we go, you know, with crazy dope love the EP drop everything going on. 
what should we expect with not only from this song, this album, your future in music, especially in 2023? Uh, more music, more music, more music. Uh, I'm at the point now where, I, like I said, I control my music, so I can do what I want. Put out how many songs as I want, you know, how many visuals as I want. I can do whatever I want at this point, and that's something that I've waited for my whole career. I don't have to answer to nobody. I can do what I want to do. And now the people that I'm signed with, I'm not, I'm not under them. I'm partners with them. You know, we equal investors in in, in my career. So uh, I do what I want now. So this year is gonna be. I'm gonna do another show for sure, because um, a lot of TV shows have been calling me Netflix, MTV, and I've been holding off because my focus is music. Yeah. You know what I mean. My focus is music. This is like this. This is my it right here. You know what I mean. That stuff is extra. It's cool, but like I said, I figured out my why, and you know I know what I love to do. And and just because it's a a certain amount of money or something is just not gonna cut it for me. I want to do what I love to do every day. You know what I mean. So it's just this year is just straight dropping music. You know I got a good publicist now, and I got um pretty much all the pieces in place. So with this project, Crazy Dope Love, it's straight. Going to drop some visuals, a bunch of PR, a bunch of interviews, more more uh, more videos. I, I really can't wait to drop another project, to be completely honest, because this one right here was the first of many, you know. But I got so many songs. I did over 100 and something songs that I just got sitting in the vault. You know what I mean? Just waiting to put out. So this was just the, this was the, this was the premiere. This was the introduction. Yeah. Crazy Dope Love was the introduction. And Crazy Dope Love was just... Me showing all my different sides, my crazy side, my dope side, and my loving side. So this was the introduction, and now it's just more music, more TV shows. I probably do another, I probably do a short film as well because um uh somebody reached out to my man my manager about me doing a film as well. So sky's the limit. I feel like this is gonna be my year for sure. I don't even think one song is gonna take off. I think I think a couple of songs are gonna take off this year for sure. Nice, I love that. Well, that's all we have for today. I've enjoyed myself. I always want to make sure the other person enjoyed themselves. No, well. for sure, man. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate your time, for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. 